So have you guys seen these photos from different brands? It could be consumers that are blending a bunch of different photos into one. And it's not like a grid where you can see the lines in between the different photos. And it's not like the split pick app where you kind of like blend the images together. But it's almost like you've actually taken these pictures as a group of people or that same person multiple times. It's like duplicating yourself in a picture. For example, I'm showing you J Lux because they tend to do it a lot and it's good for brands if you're trying to show a product at different angles like you know trying to show the different details or you're showing different looks to give like this cohesive look in one image or maybe it's the same product in multiple different colors. There's a lot of ways to use this and I'm sure some of the bigger brands like J Lux may be using a software like Photoshop to do it but I'm going to show you guys how you can do it right from your phone. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now come on now. What's up icons? It's the iconic fashion figure back with a new video. So most of this video I'm gonna be looking down because I'm gonna show you guys how to recreate these pictures directly on your phone. It's one app that you have to use and it's pretty easy. One app, one feature, that's it. I've done one and I posted it on my personal Instagram so I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So the app that we'll be using today is called Snapseed. It's free in the app store. I'm pretty sure it's available for Android too. I have iPhones so I know it's definitely for iPhone. Android, I'm sure you can get it as well. So you Snapseed, you'll select the pictures that you want to use. I typically do three. You can do more than three if you want. Like if you look at some of the other ones, some people have like four in one image, but figure out which one you want to be the main image. So like for mine that I'm getting ready to do right now, I have three of me in one picture, but the one where I'm in the black, that's going to be my main picture. That's the middle one. So I'm gonna open up Snapsee and then let me put my phone in airplane mode so the notifications don't start driving you guys crazy. So I'm going to open up Snapseed first and then you need to open up the first picture you want to use. So this is going to be like your base picture. Let me scroll. I'm going to use some of my old photos where it has a solid background. It's easier to do this when you have a solid background but towards the end of this video I'm going to show you how to take your photos if you want to do a background that has detail and decor or anything like that. But I'm going to start by showing you just a blank background because it's easier to do it with a blank background. So here is the first picture that I'm going to use. So you're going to go to tools, scroll all the way down, go to double exposure. That little square icon with the plus sign, click that and now you need to find your second picture. Probably should have saved these in an album so I didn't have to scroll through a million pictures. I think I passed it. And pick your second photo. Now I need to line this up where I want the second picture placed. And I want to put it as far this way as possible. And then that little eyedrop icon, click that and increase that all the way up 100%. Check mark that. It looks like our first photo disappeared but it's not, it's still there. We're gonna click this icon to the top right corner. That's like the double square with the arrow. Click view edits, where it pops up in blue for the double exposure. Click on that and click the middle icon, the square with the paintbrush. So now it looks like we're back to the first photo and the second one's gone, but it's not. This is where you pretty much just color in. So now we need to bring in our We're bringing in the other picture and it looks like I messed it up, but it's not. I'm just trying to get the full detail and then I'm going to zoom in and increase that or decrease, I should say, the double exposure down to zero. And this is how you can erase. So this part can take a little time to do so that way you can get everything you need. But once you got this part, and then I'll show you the next step. I'm not going to do mine perfect just because I've already done it. I already used this picture. But you guys will get the point and how you want to get rid of all of this. I'm going to increase that to 100 because I don't want that piece of here above me because that technically should be behind. 
but now you see basically how you can add and erase. You're either increasing the exposure to add or decrease the exposure to erase, which I need to do a lot of erasing down here to bring my leg back in there. So normally I would erase all of that, but I'm not going to. I just want to show you I need to add in my foot. Oh, I need to delete. Go all the way to zero, add this foot back in here that's technically behind the other leg but I don't want it to look like I don't have a foot. So that's close enough. So that's the first one. You guys can see, like if you need to see where you're erasing or adding in, that red will show you like the heat map. So like all that technically I don't need, but I'm just gonna leave it for now because you get the point. So now there's the first photo in there. Hit that back arrow. So that first part saved. Now to add in the third picture, because for me I'm doing three, you're pretty much just repeating the process. So you're going tools, double exposure, click the square with the plus sign, and find your third picture now. Did I go too far again? No. Nope. Okay, here's my third picture. So now I need to line it up again where I want it. I'm just making sure the floor is lined up at the bottom. And then increase the opacity. So check mark that. Now hit the square, the double square with the arrow at the top. View edits. Now you have two double exposures. The bottom one is the first picture. So if you needed to go back to that and fix anything, you still can, it's not too late. But I'm focusing on the third image. So I gotta click that top one, hit the middle icon. And now we gotta add that one in. I don't need this. So this foot I want in front. So I need to just add this Actually, no, doing that wrong. So let me erase. I want that foot behind. So I need to show this black. So it's almost like the black foot is stepping in front of the tan foot, more like stepping on it. But there, I just need to add that in. I want to take away the shadow behind my leg so I can erase that out. Actually, no, I want it in. Now this black line, cause my pictures didn't line up perfectly. Just want to erase that out. So that way the original image can show up there. And then I just need to bring this arm back in a bit. Okay, so those are the three images in one. So you just export it and then export to save to your camera roll. But that's pretty much it on how to do it. You pick that base photo, you go to double exposure, you add in a new photo, and then you pretty much have to just edit it back in there. And you can do that as many times as you need to. But let me go show you really quickly how you would take the photos if you had a bunch of detail in your image so that way they can line up properly so when you're standing in your scene or wherever you are taking the pictures where there's detail around there's a couple different ways you can do this but your main focus is when you're adding those pictures for the double exposure you want to make sure all the details line up so things don't look out of place so for my scene like my curtains I need to make sure the curtains line up in the back so it doesn't look like I have floating curtains everywhere or like the chair I need to line up just like these two examples from JLux they have one where all the models are straight in a row there's another one where they have someone a little well it's the same girl but she's a little closer on one picture the other two she's a little further back so when you're standing in your scene that has details and it's not a solid background if you want to do the ones that are straight in a row that's probably easier mark your spot on where you want to stand at because you're going to want to stand in that straight row also make sure like your lighting and everything stays the same for every picture so once you mark your spot like for me on my floor there's a lot there from the different tiles of where the tiles line up so that will be my mark and then you'll stand in one spot take your first picture then you'll move down you want to make sure to move enough so that way you know another of you can fit to the side take that second picture and then keep going until you get all the pictures that you need 
but you want to make sure you stay in that same row so that they all line up and then of course everything behind you or around you will stay in the same position too but let's say you want to do one where one's a little closer others are background you're pretty much doing the same thing you need to make sure everything just stays in place and that your lighting and everything all stays the same so you'll start in your one spot of where you're taking your first picture so let's say like for me in my example I'm going to step back and I'm going to be a little closer to my curtains I'm going to take the pictures there my second one based off of the way this setup is I'll do one kind of in a similar spot as far as being back by the curtains but I'll move over and then that third one I'll go stand in front of the chair so I'm closer to the camera as before I was closer to the curtains so when I put those three together it'll look like the one that's in front of the chair is closer than the other two I'm kind of like standing behind myself or I can do that in the middle and then have two on the side that are back depends on how your setup is you just want to make sure you have enough space where you can fit the different use into the picture and then make sure like lighting and everything stays the same that's pretty much it is not hard to do it's just a little bit of thought process when you're taking the pictures that's all but that's it for this video hopefully this tool helps you guys to get creative with your pictures so you don't have to do all just grids when you're trying to group a bunch of pictures together or split pick where it's like they're just blended together these are actually like you took a bunch of different pictures in one and it's all you so it's like you have twins or triplets in one picture thank you guys for watching